Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, it's time for another tier list. You know me, any excuse for a tier list. So, I've decided, let's take a wee trip down memory lane and rank some of Brendan Rodgers' former Celtic signings. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, it would be much appreciated. Let's try and get to 40,000 subscribers on the channel. Today we're going back onto tier list, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to look back for once. I've been trying my best to look forward with this new era of Brendan Rodgers, but with no news really breaking today, nothing fresh or exciting for us, I thought, well, let's have an interesting conversation around transfer recruitment. But let's take our minds back a wee bit. The, the, the method behind today's video is very, very simple. We're going to rate Brendan Rodgers' signings um, from best to worst in his first tenure as Celtic manager. Now, it's a very interesting one because this was back in a time where he was very vocal when he left about the backing that he got as manager. And you can look back at some of these names and you'll see them in a minute um, and say to yourself, wow, it was a poor bunch to be honest. There's not a great amount of talent in there and a lot of them were flops but I think a lot of that was down to the board backing that Brendan Rodgers got. A lot of it was down to the guys who were in the recruitment team back then as well aka Lee Conjurton. But now there has been a total revamp. Brendan Rodgers apparently going to get backed with a lot of money and I think this time round you'll see a lot more signings that are true to his philosophy and his football rather than maybe the penny pinching that went on a few years ago. We've totally changed over the past year or so with the backing we've given our managers. So I'm hoping that continues and I'm hoping we improve on this list. I don't want to waste too much time because there are 24 players to go through here. We're leaving out those who never made a senior appearance for the club. So your Andrew Gutmans and your Manny Perez's. Do you remember those names? Do you, is that a flash for the past? We're leaving out guys like that. We're talking about players that Celtic brought into the senior team and actually played some football. So 24 players signed between 2016 and 2019. And we're going to try and rate them exclusively on their time playing under Brendan Rodgers. We're not looking beyond that. Not Nothing from uh, you know Neil Lennon. Ange Postacoglu, we're talking about Brendan Rodgers' time as manager and we're going to try and uh, look at them on that. So yeah, there you go, there's the rules. Let's get into this because we're going to discuss a wee bit at the end. And here we are, here is the 24 players we've got to go through and I bet at first glance you're thinking to yourself, Jesus Christ, because aye, there's a lot of names in there that are ones I think we'd rather forget but we're going to try and get through them all anyway we're ranking them from elite to don't fucking remind me um pretty straightforward the best of the best at the top good mid poor and the worst go to the bottom pretty straightforward let's get through this we're starting off with someone who's still here and i think the only player out of all of these signings who's still here Am I right in saying that? I think I am. The one that has survived, and we might not have expected it, but Scott Bain. And I'm going to surprise a lot of you. I'm going to put him into mid. And I'll tell you for why. Because under Brendan Rodgers, it was a smart signing. We needed backup keepers. Craig Gordon was getting a little bit older. The other ones at the club maybe went up to scratch. Remember, we had Logan Bailey, for example, for, for a wee bit. Um, Scott Bain wasn't the worst under Rodgers. And he actually got a bit of a, a time in the team, remember, when he first signed for the club. And that was back when I think a lot of us were like, you know what, Scott Bain's actually okay. Moving on, and in, in, in the grand scheme of things, you'd probably move Scott Bain down. But, I mean, he's came in, he's done his job, he's sat in the bench, and when he's stepped in, he's, he's, he's done it. And you can argue if it's been good enough or not, but he's had a few decent performances. I'm going to stick him in mid. Maybe that's too high, but I think it's fair. Jack Hendry. You know my feelings on Jack Hendry. I don't even need to sit here. I think he's one of the worst players that I've ever seen play for Celtic in my lifetime. Especially because he was someone who was given, you know, multiple chances. It's not like someone who came in and played two games and you're like, right, he's rotten and never seen him again. He he actually had chances. Uh, we tried with him. And um, we had to watch him try. And fair play. He's went on to do good things with his career. Congratulations to him getting into the Scotland team. He's got good moves in Belgium. He's, he's done well for himself. But at Celtic... Don't fucking remind me. Lewis Morgan. I'm going to put him into poor. 
Someone who I was very excited for, I thought he was going to turn into a player at Celtic. He was one of those Scottish Premiership signings, which I think we've now started to sway away from. Um, but it was a lot more hope than anything. He did have chances. Remember, he started up front that day in the 2019 League Cup final under Neil Lennon, but never just never found his footing at Celtic. Was never good enough to play for us. Um, I don't think he would be down there as far as Jack Hendry was in my in my estimations, but a poor signing for us nonetheless. Marvin Comper. We're off to a flyer here. We've picked we've picked four good players to start with, haven't we? Marvin Bloody Comper. Ah, oh, just ah, oh, why? <laughs> That's all. Why? Why did we? Why did we do it? Who's worse, Hendry or Comper? Hmm. <laughs> um, that's the centre half partnership of dreams right there. Starfelt and Carter Vickers don't have a look in. This guy, I feel, I feel sorry for Daniel Arzani. Nothing that everything that went wrong at Celtic was was wasn't his fault. You know, like he, what he broke his leg. I cursed him. I met him in Tesco on shift one night, and I think I cursed him the same I did with Patrick Kamala. He was very unlucky. A guy who. For all we know, could have been talented, could have done you know enough to get into the team. It could have been a smart signing, but um, it was just very unlucky. I think it'd be harsh to put him in the bottom tier um, because that was out of his control. So I'm just going to stick him in poor. But listen, we never seen enough of him to actually make a, a, a valid estimation of the guy. We'll get to somebody good eventually. I swear to God, this is this is I I shouldn't have bothered making this. Do you know what? Rogers out. <laughs> I mean Louis Aguirre. This for me, and I want to talk just very quickly on not Izagiri directly, but this for me is the signing which ultimately proved that Brendan Rogers was not getting his way at the club. And I think this is one of the signings because this, this, he was signed at the beginning of the 2018-19 campaign. He is one of the signings that for me should have showed us all that Rodgers was going to be off at the first opportunity. There is no chance, there is surely no chance Rogers sat there in, in the boardroom and went, yeah, say, I want Izagiri. No chance. That, for me, was, that is what says everything about this spell of time in terms of the recruitment department. We were an incredibly successful team. We won everything. But recruitment, we were miles off it. And I think that the guys who were working at the club at the time and the board with the lack of backing they were giving Rodgers... This this shows it. He's a Gary coming back for a second spell at the club when we did not need that. We didn't need that at all. He's a Gary goes into the pool. Look, I love him. His first spell at the club, he'd be an elite. Remember, he was player of the year and all the rest of it. Fantastic sign. Everybody adored him. But his second spell, oh God almighty. We, we, we didn't need He's a Gary back. Charlie Masonda. What could have been? Uh, what could have been? I kind of feel harsh putting him in poor. But it, it, but it was poor, wasn't it? It was, it was a poor signing. Um, it was one on paper who shouldn't have been. He was this wonder kid who was meant to have a great future in the game. But he came up here and he was just... He just looked out of his depths, really. He had a couple of good games. He obviously had that big moment in the in the game uh, at Celtic Park in Europe where he got the assist against was it Zenit. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. It was a great moment. But, I mean, you, you can isolate that if you want. But in the grand scheme of things... It wasn't a good signing. I wouldn't even say it was a mid-signing because the expectation that came with him fell so flat. Abui Kuasi. My oh my. Why have I done this video? Why have I started with these players? <laughs> Abui Kuasi. Uh, don't remind me. Don't. Re he was bad. Um, do you know what? No. I'm going to give him the same treatment I gave Danny Arzani. He was really unlucky. The big injury picked up. Um, at Murrayfield in that, that Scottish Cup semi-final, or the League Cup semi-final, one of the semi-finals, he was unlucky with that. Do I think that if we took that moment away and he was fine, he would have went on to be a player? Uh, probably not, but I think it did affect him massively. Um, he was someone who came in, we spent a bit of money on, had good expectation behind him as well, but he just never really got going. And he, he, was, he was probably unlucky as well with the fact that the midfield, when he came in, was so stacked. You know, we had McGregor, Armstrong... Scott Brown, we had three really good ones, Rogic was there as well, we had good centre midfielders, it was hard to get into the midfield, but it was a bit unlucky, so you know what, I'll, I'll spare him the time and put him in poor. I'm ready to break the internet with this opinion, and I know you're going to be looking at me for saying it, but hear me out, I'm putting Ollie Buck into mid, because why, he was cooking, 
before Rogers left, you and if you've watched me for this for the longest time, you'll know it. I was the biggest Oli Buck fan in the Celtic support. I loved him. The, from the minute he signed until Rogers' departure, he was actually good. I don't care what anybody says. He was. Then Rogers left, and it all went down the pan. It was rotten. And do you know what? He's a pretty rotten football player. But if I'm isolating this and judging it on Rogers signing him and Rogers' time managing him, I'm putting him into mid. Because I thought he was quite good. He scored a good few goals. His, his pace was useful. It just all went to shit when Lennon came in. Um, if Rogers stayed till the end of that season, I think he would have been as effective as he was in the first few weeks. But he ultimately wasn't. Um, but I, because I'm judging it on Brendan Rogers' time managing these players, I'm putting them into mid beside Scott Bain because I think they have similar sort of impacts as, as Rogers' players. Fine, <laughs> God, finally, we get to a good one. The King. He goes to the top. Arguably Rogers' best signing as Celtic manager. This was the kind of player that was a Rodgers signing. It was evident that Brendan Rodgers wanted Moussa Dembele. He's, he spoke about him. He spoke about meeting him in the past, etc., etc. Just like Sinclair, for example. Um, this was a Rodgers signing. More players like that would have signal, signaled that he had a lot of control in terms of recruitment. But no, it was Izagiri, it was Lewis Morgan, it was Yusuf Malundu. Those weren't Rodgers signings. Moussa Dembele was, and he flies right to the top of the list. He shuts up there. To this day, he's one of my favourites in my lifetime. He always will be the king of Glasgow, Moussa Dembele. Timo Weah, another one. Do you know what? I'm I'm going to put him into good. Just signed for Juventus. Brilliant footballer. Really good footballer. One that I probably didn't give enough credit. But just like Oli Buck, was really unlucky with the fact that Rodgers left and Neil Lennon came in. We obviously terminated his loan earlier because Lennon just didn't fancy him at all. But he showed glimpses of being a really promising player. And I think it was, good, put it this way, it was good business for the club to get a player like that in. And he's proven that from what he's done since leaving Celtic. There's a reason that he's just signed for Juventus. Um, he's obviously in the, the, the US national team as well, played at the World Cup. It, Timo Weah deserves to be that high up for, for what he maybe done and what the signing was like when he first came in. I think you could argue maybe mid because he didn't get to do too much. But in that short space of time, I think he was a good signing from Rodgers. And we all wish that we'd seen more. I remember I got asked by Copper 90 to go and make a video about him down at Celtic Park with him because he was so electric in those first few weeks. And I remember saying, this guy's got to be a star. And now he's finally getting to prove that at a high level. Johnny Hayes. Um, I I'm stuck because I think you can make a case for him being a good signing. But I'm going to put him to the top of mid. Because he was just such a utility player. I think mid... I wish there was an in-between ground between good and mid here. Because I would have him right in the middle of the two. Because he was a good servant for the club. Came in, done a job. Was really handy. Um, but he obviously wasn't the greatest football player you'll ever see. More pace than anything, really. But I, you know me as well. I really liked Johnny Hayes. Thought he was a great option at the club. Um, and for being that, that exactly that kind of player, we had the expectations of him being. He he delivered on that front. I don't think you could be overly negative about him. When he had a bad game, he had a bad game. But when he had a good game, he looked to be a solid addition to, a, to, to a, an overall squad. But th this one's easy as well as the up into elite. Now, you could argue that he'd done most of his good work for Celtic um, after he left, after Rodgers left. He was probably you know, the highlight of the season after, and then the COVID season, he was our best player as well. You could you could perhaps argue that, but he was still an elite signing. Odson Edward will be one of the modern great strikers at Celtic, alongside Moussa Dembele. Uh, pretty identical type of signings. A good replacement for Moussa when he left. He stepped up big time. Um, yeah, Edward deserves to be right up there. I mean, I don't need to speak on him all day. You, you know exactly who he is and what he done. Marion Schved. Yeah, let's 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 get him in it. I think I think we should put him above Comper. Um Schved. Remember free Schved? Remember all of that? Why? Why did we want to free Schved? <laughs> um I suppose you can make a case that he's went on to Shakhtar and he's he's had a, a good review about him. You know, people have said he's decent at Shakhtar. He also scored that screamer for us in the Champions League qualifiers as well. But let's be real, don't fucking remind me. Talking about don't fucking remind me, there's someone else who goes right into that list, it's Jeremy Tolian. Someone who I was excited for his signing coming from Borussia Dortmund. I'd seen him play a few times, was wondering, wow, how have we managed this? And that's because he's absolutely shadza, as they would say. Um, he was rotten. 
Uh, you could say he cost us any chance that we had in that last 32 game against Valencia uh, by getting sent off. He was terrible. This is the other guy who I think you could argue... I think it's, between these three, it's so close. I think it comes down to personal opinion who you think was Roger's best signing. But I'm going to put him in... I'm going to slot him in at number two. Because it was such a smart signing, getting him at the age he was at. The fee was, was relatively low. And... There was obviously a player there. Once again, like Moose said, this was signs of a this was a Rogers signing. He'd, he'd worked with him at Swansea. We knew he was a Rogers signing, and he was an elite level player for us, uh, playing in this league and and even in Europe, he was brilliant for us as well. Scott Sinclair was magic. He's one of the best wingers I've seen at recent times in Celtic. I miss him. I would kill for him in his prime again, um, and I wish we got much more of him. I wish we'd seen longer. Absolutely adored Scott Sinclair. And it's an easy one to put him up in there. Don't fucking remain. Why? Malum? Why? This is what I mean. I mean. You can't blame Rogers for signings like Malumbu. Once again, you're telling me Rogers sat in the boardroom and went, Hi, Yusuf Malumbu. That's who I want to sign. Bring him in. No chance. There's no chance. The board penny pension was the, the in thing back in these times. It was John McGinn or Yusuf Malumbu, as they said. My God. We picked the right one, didn't we? It gets worse. I mean, where do I put this guy? <laughs> Bio. Uh, do you know what? It, 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 poor. I'll put him at the bottom of poor. Because there was there was wee glimpses of him maybe doing something for us. And just... He's just... He, he is the literal definition of a poor player. <laughs> I'm putting Benkovic into good. Now, he's went on to flop. He's not really done much with his career post-Celtic. I think he's been unlucky with injuries. I, I think he picked up an injury when he was at Celtic, in fact. Because he only made about 23, 24 appearances for us throughout that campaign. But he was good for us. He was. Remember, everybody wanted him to sign again the following season. Never did. Um, there was rumours of him going here, there and everywhere. And I think Leicester, at some point, wanted to give him a go. Um, then, obviously, Rodgers ended up at Leicester. But never happened for him there. Benkovic, he was good. He was a solid centre half. Really liked him uh, in that, that one season we had with him. Um, it's a shame that his career's not went and, and done anything since, but I like the big man. I'm putting him in good. Doris De Vries, a gentleman by all accounts. But don't fucking remind me. <laughs> um, the fact that he came in to actually be our first choice keeper is nuts. And then, then Barcelona happened. Uh, <laughs> Aye, Doris De Vries. I don't know if that's harsh because he did end up spending the majority of his time as like a second choice keeper behind Craig Gordon. So, so maybe that's... Do you know what? Aye, I'm going to move him into poor because I think that's been quite harsh on him. But he did have some honking moments when he did play. I'm going to put this guy in. I'm putting Cole into mid because overall, he turned out to be good for the club in terms of coming in with that experience, good leader... Went on to be coaching for us, was rated really highly as a coach at us, and I know we're trying to judge it on playing, but he did come in at what, like 36 years old, and he didn't play a lot of football, he was unlucky that a couple of the big games, like Barcelona for example, were, were Barcelona, like, we were playing a back three of like him, Owen O'Connell, and somebody else that night, Um, I'm going to put him into mid, because... You know, I, I liked Big Cole. For, for for what you expected with a guy like him coming in, you knew he wasn't going to be playing much longer. I don't think he was beyond dreadful. And I'd certainly say he was better than, than any of the other defensive options down here. Comp or Hendry. I, I'm going to put him into mid. Maybe that's overrated him. I, I don't know. Let's battle through these last few here. Kundai Benyu. Just, just... I, I feel like... I feel like we shouldn't be... Did he even make a senior appearance? I'm going to double check this. He did. He played one game. Um, I remember him playing in pre-season and he tried some daft fucking thing with a ball, a roll, a rollover or whatever you might call them and he fell in his arse. Um, but he did. He played a senior game. He made one appearance for us and it was the oh, it was the Linfield game which I wasn't at so i never seen that. I was on holiday. I remember that. So there you go. Um, <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> Christian Gamboa was pretty bad. He, he was pretty, pretty bad. But he did have a couple of good games. He did. There was a couple of games that he was quite decent. People were like, oh, give Gamboa a chance over a Lustig. I remember that conversation. I remember it. People were getting behind that for a bit. Overall, he turned out to be quite poor. But we didn't spend a lot... Of I'm putting him into mid. 
I am. Is that generous? I think that's generous. I'm going to put him at the top of poor. We need another in-between section just called Christian Gamboa. Um, aye. And finally, the last player, Olivier Cham. I'm putting him at the good. He was such a polarising player. I've never seen someone split opinion between Celtic fans. My entire world I have, I've seen a few polarising players. But he's up there with the very, very best of the polarising players. But on his day, he was a quality football player. And I think that we got the absolute best of him out of Brend with Brendan Rodgers in charge. Because it was really towards the end when Lennon was managing him where people were like, oh, get him out. You know, while Rodgers was here, he, he was good. He was. His first season in particular, he was an animal. So I'm putting him into good. Wasn't quite elite, but he was a good baller. And there you go. Um, as you can see, it's quite bottom heavy. More in poor, and don't fucking remind me, than there is in the top three sections combined, I think. Um, that's what needs to change at Celtic. I don't, and I said this in my video, remember I made the video saying, oh, I want Rodgers back. I don't think this was necessarily his fault. Uh, I think that there was a lot more to it, and that's why Rodgers has been given reassurances this time, especially so he can look better. But, look, the elite signings were elite. Those three are three of the best players I've seen at Celtic in the last 10 years. So, aye, there you go. There's your list. As always, I've rambled on much longer than I wanted to, so the discussion I was going to have is now finished. It's over. Like and subscribe. Let me know how you'd rate these players below. Remember, it's all just my opinion. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Um, but aye, like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.